Traumatic brain injury is the main cause of lifelong disability in Australians aged between 15 and 25. More than 75% of victims fail to achieve full recovery. But as researchers learn more and more about the ability of the brain to adapt and recover from trauma, there's renewed hope. One young man who offers a clear example of what's possible is 25-year-old Jonathan Koenig. A decade ago, doctors feared he wouldn't survive, but with hard work and a dedicated family, he's made remarkable progress. Tracy Bowden reports. I wish you all the best in today's match. Yeah, thank you very much. And this is for you too. We've got one of these. This is a night Jonathan Koenig has been looking forward to for a long time. Thank you. I've already got one. I'm feeling very good. Very cheerful. Oh, there you go. Good night. Good thing. Have a look at that. He's about to run out onto the field with the Canberra Raiders, more than a decade after suffering a traumatic brain injury which doctors feared could kill him. It's a very desperate time in your lives when you're told that a, you know, your son may not survive and if he does he may remain in a persistent vegetative state. They said he may never walk, talk or eat again. The doctors, all of them were saying, he, I don't know, I don't think that he will survive after tonight. Jonathan Koenig was a happy, energetic little boy who loved sport. But everything changed one Sunday afternoon when he was 12. Suddenly one of his mates came running to the front door of the family's home in Sydney's southern suburbs. He was absolutely hysterical with his arms flying in the air saying, Cheryl, come quick, Jono's been hit by a car. Cheryl and Robert Koenig were told to prepare for the worst. Their son had suffered severe brain injury and would be in a coma for weeks. They actually did one day have the priest come in and prepare to read for me my last rites. The Koenigs refused to give up hope. They found out everything they could to help their son recover, immersing him in an intensive program of physical stimulation. We had to do something, we started to stretch him and uh, stimulate the um, uh, uh, muscles. Yeah, so we started very early on. Since the accident, Jonathan Koenig's life has been marked by a series of milestones once viewed as impossible. Returning to school and passing his HSC, getting his learner's permit and holding down several part-time jobs. Why do you think you've done so well and made so much progress? Yes. OK, then I think I... I'm, yeah, I think I have done so well because I have a fighting attitude in me. Jogging on the spot, that's it. More bounce into Cheryl Koenig is convinced her son is proof of the brain's plasticity, its ability to recover from injury. The brain, in my opinion, has the ability to repair itself just like any organ in the body and we're only just beginning to touch on, on that. Um, and uh, I think there is no expiry on that recovery either. It's a view supported by the latest research on animal models. We used to think um, when the brain was injured, then that was it. The injury that the brain received was actually permanent and there wasn't much that um, change that actually could occur within the brain. We're now starting to realise with our work and the work of many others internationally that that's not the case. Senior research fellow Dr Tracy Dixon and her team at the Menzies Institute in Hobart have made some significant discoveries about the behaviour of healthy nerve cells near an injury. There's some sort of signal between the injured neurons and the non-injured neurons or nerve cells that are telling them to also adapt and change to the injury. 
The research could revolutionise the way brain injuries are treated. Now we can see that there is potential scope for intervention or at least maybe one day down the track a scope for a, a, some sort of um, behavioural or drug therapeutic that could really improve the outcomes for those people. So I think that's the thing, that's the point where we're at now, at least providing some hope for those people. There's a growing amount of evidence now uh, and good evidence to, to, to demonstrate that the recovery following brain injury is, uh, takes many years. A key part of Jonathan Koenig's recovery has been working with physiotherapist Gavin Williams at Melbourne's Epworth Rehabilitation Hospital. He couldn't use his left arm at all. He could barely use his left leg. He could barely stand. I suppose our approach is, um, compared to other centres, possibly more intense and for a prolonged period of time. Before the accident, Jonathan Koenig was a keen piano player. One of the first signs that he could actually remember his past was when he sat down at the piano and started playing a familiar tune. I can play chariots of fire with matter of fact. I was learning that very song when my accident happened. Recently, Jonathan Koenig's been focusing on his running, getting ready for his biggest sporting moment yet. How do you feel about that? I feel very excited. <laughs> You liked uh, lining up there with the Raiderettes. Don't <laughs> 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 get too personal. <laughs> yeah, but the Raiderettes was very cute. <laughs> the Canberra Raiders are using tonight's game to raise awareness and funding for Brain Injury Australia. John O'Turney, who was injured as a 12 year old. And Finally, the big moment. To help them onto the field tonight. Given, of course, the Raiders wearing these Brain Injury Australia jerseys tonight. Well done, John. Congratulations. John, I'm going to face the lead us out, mate. It's awesome, mate. Eh? Yeah. Got us a win, eh? Yeah. They're really good. Can you sing a song? Yeah. yeah. The Canberra Raiders have had a big win tonight, but for Jonathan Koenig, just being here is an enormous victory. Yeah, mate. Working on the Tracy Bowden with that report, and that's the program for tonight.